Hello everybody, welcome to another video and in this video I'm going to be showing you how I set about painting my castle um, from Tabletop Workshop that I've been working on. Um, if you watched my previous video in this series I showed you how I assembled everything and did a bit of a review of the kit. In this video I'm going to show you how I set about painting it and how I changed it from this sort of grey piece of plastic that's spinning around um, on the screen and how I turned it into something that looked a little bit more like this. Now, when I come to paint this, I decided that I would demonstrate this on just one of the standard wall sections. Um, and as you can see, I haven't glued all these sections together and that's so I can change the heights of the wall if I need to. Now, as you can see, there is interior detail. So if you're going to paint the inside of this, then you can apply the same method that I'm using on the walls to the inside. I'm going to paint each section of the wall together but there are some parts of this where I will just put all three pieces back together just so I can get some continuity. And to begin things off I undercoat the whole thing with Abaddon Black um, Spray from Games Workshop but any black primer will do and I make sure that I get into all the nooks and crannies and obviously I undercoat the inside as well. As I already said I'm not going to be painting the inside because the basing system that I use will not allow um, for troops to be placed inside. However, if you're doing things with single basing or a different basing scheme, um, then you may well want to do so, so you will get some passageways. However, if you are going to do that, then I would suggest probably painting each of the wall sections before gluing them together, because it's going to be really hard to get a brush in there, even a dry brush, just to do some general work. Anyway, what we'll do, just get everything set up and we'll crack on. Some of the inspirations that I've been using for uh, reference are Anik Castle and Bambra Castle, both of which were used in the Wars of the Roses, and Bambra um, even had a siege and one of the towers was knocked down, so, um, so it's nice to actually have some reference material um, from something that was actually active. As I'm going to be painting some quite large pieces, my wife kindly donated some of her old makeup brushes and these are fantastic for dry brushing. I'm going to be using the large one on the left for doing the bulk of the overbrushing, the medium one um, for doing um, some of the sort of medium tone highlights and then the little one goes for all the detail work. Now the first thing I'm going to be working on is the main effectively base coats for the stone so I'm going to be using the Citadel colour uh, Mournfang Brown, Rakar Flesh and Tyrant Skull. So to get things started I use the Citadel Mournfang Brown and the large um, makeup brush and I basically do what I think is referred to as overbrushing but effectively a heavy heavy dry brush over all of um, the plastic areas, all of the areas of stone that we're going to be painting. I go back over it a couple of times as well just to make sure it's built up and in a couple of places you will see where the paint has actually built up quite a lot. That isn't a problem, it's just going to add to the overall effect. Now I use the, uh, the mid-size makeup brush and I'm going to use Citadel Colour Rakar Flesh and this is basically a mid-tone and I'm basically going to be hitting all of the bricks with a downward motion and this is a slightly lighter dry brush than the first coat and this starts just picking out and defining the stonework. As you can see here, it's already starting to take shape. The browns that we put down, first of all, are providing a really, really nice base layer. And then the Rakar flesh just brings it out. And you can see here that, again, I've blobbed a bit of paint onto there, but that's not a problem. Those little imperfections are actually going to be quite useful when it comes to highlighting and making things a bit more individual. Okay, and the final part of the base layers is to use the Citadel Dry Paint Tyrant Skull. And I'm going to use the small brush now, and I'm not going to paint this over the entire area. I'm going to focus on areas like the windows, the corners, and just basically just highlight away. And but just leave some areas without that. And this area, this can act where stone has been worn, where people have been walking over it. I focus on the paving, and it really, really starts to bring everything together. And this tyrant skull can be used throughout this process if you want to do corrections. As you can see, like I said, I'm going to leave the uh, the inside black. Now I quite like this look where you've got the uh, the painted outside and the solid black inside. Um, but you could just do the same process as I've already said. 
Now it's time to add some hues. Now these aren't going to be painted over the entire model, but basically they're just going to add some visual interest. So I'm going to be using Death World Forest by Citadel, Sanguine Base, Iron Hole Grey, and Beast Hide from P3. So I'm going to use the small dry brush or makeup brush for all of these. And to kick things off, I'm going to be using the Death World Forest. Now this is going to represent sort of slime and mold that's built up on the outside of the walls. Now, but you've got to remember that these walls would have been looked after so it's it don't overdo it i've added some below the windows and in corners um if you had an area where two walls are joining then i would also add that there like between the cracks and the crenellations that's where you, you want to add this kind of stuff and you don't want to go overboard i've added a little bit to the paving slabs just again a bit of visual interest next i'm going to be using the p3 color sanguine base and this rep just again it just adds a bit of interest to things a completely contrasts with what i've done already and it just represents that sandstone and more sort of weather beaten stuff could even potentially be heat affected following this i'm going to use iron hole gray and this is the only time i use a gray paint and very very sparingly just highlight a couple of areas um, across the castle and the paving slabs Finally, I just use beast hide around the bottom of the walls and on the walkway just to represent dirt and wear and tear. And it will look something like this. Now, as you can see, it gives it sort of a mottled effect. Um, I like that because I think it makes it look weather beaten and worn. And the final stage in actually doing these walls is what would effectively be effects. I'm going to use the Citadel Colour Militarum Green, which is a contrast paint, AK Interactive Streaking Grime, and then I'm going to be using some weathering pigments, in this case raw umber at the very end, just to add in some ground in dirt between the paving slabs. So to get things started, where we put the green down before, um, I'm going to use Militarum Green and I kind of blob it on and then I use my finger and I drag it down because it feathers it out towards the edges and it also just kind of creates a bit of, uh, <laughs> basically a bit of a, a running look. So it looks like water has run down there, it looks like water has caught or that someone's been chucking stuff down the edge consistently. Um, it can be, you can do a little bit too much on this if you do just put some water on a brush or on a on a piece of kitchen towel and wipe it off the next thing is use the ak interactive streaking grime and i put this on neat i don't mix it with any white spirit or anything at this stage and effectively i just pull it down i create streaks where grime is built up where there's been runoff and i also create sort of puddles on the paving slabs but don't worry it's not going to stay this way once it's dried i use white spirit and i I use a cotton bud I think they're called q-tips in other countries and I now basically go over those areas with the alcohol on the cotton bud and I effectively remove and feather away the streaking grime that I've put on there and what you'll be left with at the end is this sort of nice faded look um, and you effectively you've tinted this area it looks like you know stuff is built up over time um, this stuff can take a little while to dry and I suggest you do it in a ventilated room because white spirit stinks now finally I'm going to use some pro pigments and I'm going to use raw umber. I'm going to mix this together, use an old brush for this because this brush will get knackered doing this. Um, and you want something that is about the consistency of like milk. Um, and I just use this and dot it in uh, in between all of the, uh, the slabs and allow capillary action to sort of drag it down those cracks and this is going to represent ground in dirt now you don't have to go over every single one um, how basically where you touch that brush it's going to deposit the pigment in those gaps and then as it dries it's going to create a quite nice effect it can take a little while to dry so don't be surprised if you come back to this in sort of 10 minutes and it still doesn't look right but by morning you should potentially have something um, that looks quite nice while this is drying, I'm going to use uh, Tyrant Skull again, and I'm going to go over and I'm going to do some corrections um, where things have either I've either gone a little bit too hard, a little bit too heavy, like here with the grey. Now that the pigments have dried, you can see what I mean. You can see where that sort of dirt is just sort of, you know, collected in between the slabs. I don't want it to be all over the model. You may want to, if you want to, then just then just heap up the pigments in one area. To me, this just makes it look like soldiers have been going backwards and forwards across the battlements, you know, um, and depositing dirt as they go. And um, this is pretty much the end of the process. 
For those areas that have doors, like this watchtower, I basically paint it with Gore Grunt of Fur from Citadel. And uh, then after that, I pick out the details on the door with Lead Belcher. And then once that is all dry, I use the Army Painter Strong Tone Wash over the entire door and then let's set that aside to dry. And then that's it for any kind of woodwork. That's exactly the process I use on the main gate as well. Now that everything's dry, this is how it looks at the end. Now, this isn't a slow process. This, you know, it, it paints up very quickly. Doing each wall section only takes about an hour if you allow for drying time for the pigments and the washes so you could do one and then production line the rest and i'm really really pleased with how this has come out this is the look that i was going for again i've left it completely modular um so here you can see the crenellations and the battlements and uh yeah, I'm just really, really pleased with how this came out. This may not be to everybody's taste. If you want that more classic castle look, then you could just swap in some greys. But just to show you how this all goes together, you use the connectors um, that you get in the pack like this. And you, then you can just slot everything together. Now, I've painted up this um, other wall section at the same time. So there will be some slight differences between the two. But overall, I'm really pleased with the effect. And here you can see one of the completed wall sections. There is another one at the back. And uh, this is one of the towers. So you can see I've done the same process all the way down inside the tower. Now, some people ask me how miniatures scale up against this. So these are the 28 millimeter peri miniatures that I normally use. Um, as you can see, the base kind of hangs over at the back, but that's because I've got it on a 60 by 40. So I think I'm gonna have to actually uh, make some castle guards on single bases. Overall, I'm really, really pleased with how the uh, the paint job has come out. As I say it's pretty quick and uh, and fairly simple to do. So that's really it for this video. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Sorry, it's quite a short one, but um, I basically want to crack on with this castle project because I've got lots of things that I want to add on. I want to add some uh, defenses. I want to add um, some bits and flagpoles and bits and bobs to all of the areas. And um, I just basically can't wait to get going. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you did, give the video a like, drop a comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.